Good evening. I am not Rod Serling. Morgan Freeman is out after injuries he sustained during the recording of our radio show. Tonight we step away from the urban myth and into the myths of old. <coughs> I apologize, I'm not sure what that was. Something must have been stuck in my throat. Tonight we will be delving into the myths of ancient Ireland. The myths that, to this day, still inspire awe and fear in the hearts of its people. Myths that have created some of the most iconic horror monsters of our time. Vampires. We've all seen the movies. We've all read the stories. But what many don't know is that the father of the modern vampire story came from a land that was steeped in tales of the bizarre bloodsuckers. The Dare Do is one such story. Mind talk about Dare Do. Mind not know she wait. Ways to take little children, little babies, little young men away she do. Drain them of their lifeblood, never find them again. A young woman, beaten and abused to the point of suicide, and yet her spirit still roams this world, hunting both children and young men alike taking them away and draining them of their life essence so that they are never seen or heard from again. One witness recounts her story. So, we had just returned from France and uh, we were so excited to continue our trip through Europe. And uh, we had uh, just come to Ireland and he was so excited. He, he said there'd be a lot of drinks. And this time that we went out to a pub, I just, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I turned in before him. And I, I lost track of time, I fell asleep. And uh, in the morning I realized that Ted, Ted never came back. So I, asked around, I went back to the pub and I asked around if anybody had seen him. And they said that they had seen him with a red-haired lady I, that they nobody had ever seen before. And uh, it was an older man who told me, an older man who was there in the pub that night, who told me that he was never coming back, that he that he was taken and he used the words do dirk dirk do is this monster real can she be stopped people think we're crazy putting rocks on the grave Derek do do not come the little babies and the young lads he survive another year we'll be right back Welcome back to our show. Our next terrifying tale is about a man who inspired the Irish author Bram Stoker himself. A man who, supposedly, was more inspiration to the tale of Dracula than Vlad the Impaler. A man known only as... Artok. If Artok was a man, he was a giant, he's more than a man. You kill him, think he'd done, but he'd come back. Like he do, take everything from the people, man blood. They kill him again, but he keep coming back. So they talk to the druids and they learn. Stab him in the heart with a sword of you, bury him upside down with thorns. That's what they do. They stop the monster, and he buried him still. Slaughterly wait for him to come back, buried under that tree. But he wait too. Sometime people say to see him. Sometime I say to see him. A massive chieftain who oppressed his people even in death. Does this sound familiar? Perhaps like the tale of one Count Dracula. And the similarities don't end there. You see, when the rival chieftain killed him, he was buried standing right side up, as was proper for royalty at the time. But he came back, confused and concerned at his strange immortality. The 
other chieftain sought the assistance of druids who explained to him that Arctak was already a member of the undead and that the only way to stop him was to stab him through the chest with a sword made of you, much like a wooden stake, and bury him, not standing up, but upside down, and place a large stone covered in nettles over his grave. Could this myth be true? We may never know. When we come back, we will cover our third and final monster. Welcome back. Now tonight we've covered two Irish bloodsuckers, but it's time to steer away from such monsters and move toward a creature that has inspired many a horror film. Doolahan are not men, not horsemen either. Can't be a horseman if you're not a man at all. Black armor, black horse, start fire. Carry a whip made from human spite. Doolahan is our reaper. Come to take the dead. No door or gate can stop him. If you see him, hug to whatever god you may worship and just drench you in blood. If you, if you don't, you go blind in one eye, taken by Doolahan, struck by the whip of his. My friend Finn's here. Now my friend Finn got no depth perception, walks in the walls and such. It was, it was Halloween actually. Um, Justin and I were, we were, uh, we were just celebrating. It was really fun actually. We holed up in a town called Mornson for the night. We just rented this small little shack. Um, it was fine, it was actually a great place. But it got really cold in the middle of the night. And I noticed that all of the, all of the gates had just blown open. So I asked Justin to go out and close them. I liked the place, I was hoping we could come back and re-rent it. We didn't want the renters to think we were lazy. When he came back in, he was covered in this red gunk. It smelled horrible. And um, he said that some joker in a headless horseman costume would run by in a carriage and just dump this bucket of it all over him. He came back in and I didn't find out until later it was actually blood. But we had put it out of our minds, but a week later he, he, died, in a, he died in a car accident. Are these stories you heard tonight true? The world may never know. Thank you for joining us. I'm not Rod Serling. Wishing you a weird evening. <laughs>